Gordon Cooper is an American hero, one of the Mercury 7, our first astronauts. He was the last American to travel into space alone. Before he became an astronaut, Cooper was an elite Air Force test pilot. That's when he witnessed an amazing sight, a fleet of hundreds of UFOs. Yes, they were flying quite high. How high, we couldn't tell because we couldn't get anywhere near their altitude. Following standard procedure, Cooper filed a report. The official response puzzled him. They were probably high-flying seed pods, which didn't sound very logical. The military often claims that UFO sightings are simply weather balloons. I chased one one time in an airplane, and Boy, it really looked like a big saucer very high, and I had an afterburner going and got as high as I get in this airplane. And as I started pulling up along close to it, I had a very shamefaced look on my face when I realized it was a big weather balloon with the radio package hanging under it. A few years later, at Edwards Air Force Base, Cooper had another UFO experience. This time, his camera crew actually filmed it. As they were sitting there filming, a little saucer came from, uh, I say little saucer, it was a saucer, it came flying over their heads, put down three little landing gear and landed right out on the dry lake bed. And they picked up their cameras and started over toward it, filming as they went. And when they got in fairly close to it, it lifted up, put the gear back in the wheel wells, tipped up and took off at a great rate of speed. I sent them over to develop the film and then had to go through the, all the proper regulations of reporting this. And, and we wound up having to send the film forward to Washington in the uh, base jet airplane. And uh, I don't know whether anyone's ever seen it since. The alien craft was strikingly similar to the ones he saw a few years before. And basically the same plan form vehicle. They were a double saucer, lenticular. But if you're going to be going in and out of atmospheres like Earth or other places might have, you certainly need a little more aerodynamic type of vehicle. And the saucer has the capability of going through the air at tremendous rates of speed and handling the bow and trailing wave without making shock waves. So it can be very silent while traveling at big rates of speed through the atmosphere. Cooper has yet another account. He has a friend of mine, he's a captain on a major airline. Uh, at night, he was flying along, he noticed this, suddenly a big glow came off his left wing, and he looked out and this big saucer was sitting right off their wing, and so he turned slightly toward and it moved away, and turned back and it moved back in position, and turned to his co-pilot and said, uh, do you see what I see? And he said, oh God, yeah, I do. And it trailed along with him for quite a period of time and tipped up and climbed very steeply away. Astronauts have reported several UFO sightings from space, but Cooper believes only one of them is true. To my knowledge, the only thing that was ever seen on any of our space flights, and believe me, all of us would like to have seen something, was on Jim McDivitt's Gemini 7 mission where they saw um, this glint of something metallic off in the distance. And he reported, and nobody had it listed on the ground, so he tried getting a picture of it. But the sun, unfortunately, was glinting off of it. So right all you got is just a glint. There was no detail on what it was, but never any, uh, any further sighting at all. Huh? In a letter to the UN, Cooper laid out his opinion on UFOs. I, I would like to think that they're going to really release all the information. Cooper believes we are not alone. No, I've always felt that there are a lot of other planets that have life on. With all those numbers of potentially habitable planets out there, I think we're kind of vain to think that God would habitate only one of them. 